Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I'm very sorry for the delay again. I'm still trying to find a balance for how often I can post videos in between my work, so. <sighs> but yeah, this is gonna be a tutorial video and I'm gonna show you guys how I colored my line art um, in Photoshop. And I hope this is helpful. This is the first tutorial I've done, so I hope I don't like royally screw it up. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So I scanned the artwork um, I scanned it in on my Epson Perfection scanner and what I'm doing here is I am creating a bottom layer that I can eventually turn white and I'm making a duplicate of the original scan just in case I mess it up and then I'm hiding it and I'm going to alter the one um, up on top there. What I'm doing now is I'm doing a color select. What I did was I got the, I hit the select button up top and I did color selection on all of the black. So I'm selecting just the lines and then I pressed control uh, J, I think is the, uh, the buttons that I used. And then um, that puts all of those black lines on another layer. Um, so it leaves out all the white, like you can see here. And I put a, a white layer on the bottom as the background. And now what I'm doing is I'm basically just duplicating that black line layer over and over again and I'm setting them to multiply so that they can darken up and then I merge them all together and then that has basically separated the lines from the whiteness on the scan. So the lines are completely separate and uh, you can kind of, you can see all of like the graininess and everything. Um, still and you can also <clears throat> when you select the the lines you can see that um you can see how much you want to select i usually try and select as much black as possible so that it's uh not missing anything so yeah you get a good look at how it looks um i did it pretty sketchy I used just a micron uh, a pen and uh, now I'm just basically editing parts that I didn't like. Um, I was doing this with a mouse so it took me forever. I was really lazy when I was doing it so I was just kind of editing the occasional thing. Ideally I would have liked it to be less messy but I think in the end, especially when the fin like final product was printed, it looks really good. So now I'm just messing around with that background layer and I'm trying to find what color I'd like to work from. It's going to be like the base color that I want to kind of stem the rest of the art from. And uh, I was like, I ended up just going around this pink color because I don't, I don't know why. It just ended up looking decent. So I chose that and I messed around for a little while with all the different kinds of colors um, until I found one that that I liked. I don't know what happened to me right there. I must have had to stop for some reason. Um, so this painting was actually, I, I guess it's kind of obvious, it's all about pollution and um, she's mother nature and She's looking down at the city and all the pollution, worried about it. Uh, so yeah, I went with a, I think I went with like a peachy pink color. Um, I wanted to make her hair green um, so that you could kind of get the idea that she is mother nature and uh, I feel like the colors that I went with were pretty good. So now what I'm doing is I went to the layer that is just the lines and I double clicked it and um, it, I did the um, color overlay and I looked for a color that I thought would work well with the background and I'm messing around with this a lot more in, in the future but um, yeah. So I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> okay, uh, now I'm just going in. I made a layer below the line layer and I'm just coloring it all in, blocking it in. Um, ideally, it's nice to keep 
each color on a separate layer. Um, I can't remember if I did that with this one, uh, but I think it's a good idea because then you can just select that entire layer and if you want to do any gradients or any shading or anything on top of it, then um, you don't have to worry about getting it on the other, other layers, so that's pretty handy. Uh, yeah, it looks like I am doing them separate layers. So I'm doing the vine coloring on a layer on top of the green so that I could have like I could be messy with the green and then with this I'm just more careful. Um, and then I go back to the green layer and I'm just finding different colors for everything. So since the pink, oh okay, never mind, I did do the pink on a different layer. So yeah, that kind of pink I left on a different layer. And it is pretty messy, and I do go back and kind of edit things as I go along. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be tidy so I don't forget things, so I'm renaming everything. Um, I like to stick with a limited color palette. Um, I feel like it helps kind of... I don't know, I, I think it helps keep it looking nice. I do have, um, like, pink and green are kind of complementary colors, like borderline complementary, so uh, I really like how complementary colors look, but I feel like if you do complementary colors, it's good to have a lot of muted tones, that's at least my preference. Um, so then it kind of, I don't know, it meshes nicely together. I, I really like, mu uh, sorry, I really like muted tones, so that's why I chose to kind of have that palette. <clears throat> so now I'm going in and blocking in her skin color, and the awesome thing about having separate, separate uh, layers with the colors is that you can double click the layers and you can um, do color overlays of the different layers. So you can just block everything now, block, block in everything now, and then later you could go in and uh, just make whatever edits you want to do and try and find like what kind of skin tone you want, um, what, what kind of hair color you want. Same with the lines. Like I love that I was able to go in and just make a bunch of edits. And so yeah, I made another layer and I did her mask and then I put it on a lower op opacity so that it would look a little bit more like uh, translucent, or transparent, sorry. Um, so now, what am I doing here? I'm going in and I'm just like making edits to things here and there, making sure it doesn't look bad. <laughs> um, yeah, ideally, I think it would have been nice to have everything look more neat, but to be honest, it actually ended up looking really nice the way it is. Like the the lines, the way they are a little bit uneven and just, I don't know, it ended up looking very nice as a print. And this one is actually one of my favorite prints, I think, even though like it doesn't have a lot of like ridiculous shading to it or anything. Um, I, I really like how it turned out. I need to do it more like this actually. So now I'm just going in, um, coloring the buildings, trying to figure out uh, which colors I should use and how to space out the colors to make it look decent, um, makes the buildings stand out from one another. And now I'm going to mess around with the skin tone for a long time. <laughs> so I wasn't sure like if I should make her darker, but I was just messing around with everything for quite a while, trying to find the perfect colors for for everything. Um, overall, I'm really happy with how it all worked out. Um, it's getting a lot closer now to what it looks like when it's finished. I love messing with the line color. It changes everything. It makes it look so amazing. Um, and now I'm messing around with the hair color, trying to figure out which one would be good. 
and the grass looked way too kind of fake looking to me so I was looking for a color that wouldn't look so fake yeah that's a lot better and I'm just going over and filling in gaps that I missed um, I'm pretty sure at this point I was using my Cintiq um, the first parts like the editing parts at the beginning I was using um, my computer and just my mouse but once I started blocking in colors I took it onto my Cintiq and started working on it there. Um, for those of you guys wondering, I was using a Wacom uh, 12WX Cintiq. Um, I'll have to do a review on that at some point because I know that would have been very helpful for me. <laughs> um, so now, what am I doing here? So now what I'm doing is I'm creating gradients um, on around the eyes and uh, other areas that I wanted to have more of a pink tone to it. Um, I did the gradients underneath the lines and um, what I did was I picked a, the color I wanted um, and I went to the gradient tool and I went to the uh, circle gradient at the top there. And then I'm going in and I'm just getting rid of where all the gradient went over top of everything. Um, I know I had a reason for doing it this way instead of... You know what? I, I'm, I'm honestly not sure why I didn't just select the skin <laughs> color and then just did the gradients inside of that. I think I was pretty tired when I did it. But normally what you would want to do is... Um, since the skin is all on one layer, um, it would be best to take the magic wand tool and select all of the the skin tone and then just on another layer do the gradients so that it doesn't spill over onto the rest of the art. <laughs> so now what I'm doing is I selected the uh, the line layer and I hit the, uh, if you if you look right above the layer there, um, that box, I can't remember what it's called, it's like a sort of a lock tool, but it basically makes it so that you can, when you color over that layer, it will only color on top of the things on that layer, it'll leave everything else alone. So it's a good way to add, like right now I'm making her her eye, like her, her eyes darker than the rest of the, the lines on the rest of the art. So that's what I did there and um, it really helps for a lot of things actually and it's another way to only edit, um, say like with the skin tones, like it would be an awesome way to just add like lots of shading and lighting on just the skin without anything getting on the other layers. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. I really like it for line work. Um, so yeah, and then you just hit that button again to unlock the, the layer if you want to. It's just a way to color on top of what's on there. So if you wanted to actually draw more on that layer, you have to unlock it to be able to draw more on it. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Alright. So yeah, at this point I'm just adding little details on top of everything. Um, so yeah, I unlocked the layer like I was talking about, so now I can add more stuff. So I'm just going in and kind of messing around with things, making it a little bit more um, pleasant to my eye. <laughs> Because, yeah, I, I think I drew this originally on a very small piece of paper, so zooming in on it like this was just, like, atrocious to me. But I, I do really like how it turned out anyways, even though it seemed just, like, a bit messy to me. So, yeah. Um, I'm just adding little highlights here and there to make it more or have more dimensions, I guess. I didn't want to get too into 
the details because I did like how kind of simple it looked. So I didn't want to get too crazy into it. I was considering not even like making the eyes darker, but I do think they add a nice touch and they kind of draw you into that area. Um, so yeah, I like how I like how that turned out. So I'm just going around and making sure everything looks good, making edits, getting rid of um, any little like tangents, um, just making sure everything looks good. So I didn't like how bright the shine was on the nose there, so I was just messing around with that. Um, at this point, like I knew I was really close to the end, so I was just kind of drawing on whatever layer I want. Um, and yeah, I think this is getting pretty close to the end here. Uh, I didn't add any other overlays onto it, no additional gradients. I just kind of left it simple, left it nice, and kind of, I don't know, it was fun. I really like this way of, um, uh, like this technique. I, I don't know, it's cool. <laughs> if you guys want to try it out, um, it was pretty awesome. I think it'd be really good for comics. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this. I do want to do more tutorials. I just, I've never really teached anyone, so I need to get into that mindset of uh, learning how to explain to people how I do things. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, I definitely suggest trying this technique out. It's pretty simple and it shows a lot of awesome starter techniques with uh, Photoshop. Anyways, thanks you guys for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Please click like and subscribe for more.